excite, ignite, and delight the market that you're selling to. Known throughout the speaking and training community as the branding evangelist, Jerry has helped over 100,000 small businesses from over 600 different industries with their branding since starting his brand development and training company full-time since July 1985. And I am so honored and proud to have him as one of my referral partners here in Palm Beach, Florida. Jerry Foster, take it away. So glad you could be here today. And thank you, Scott. Well, listen, I appreciate it. And I tell you, I love the way that you read that. That um, that warms my heart. So let me make sure <laughs> I got the share screen here. I gave a talk once and a little bit in, someone said, Jerry, we can't see your slides. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the slides, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let me just say a couple of things. First off, I want to acknowledge Dion. I think she's exceptional. I think she's extraordinary. Oh, I want to also acknowledge Scott. We haven't had the opportunity to really connect yet, but what he has put together is phenomenal. And I want to acknowledge all of you for being here because there's a lot of other things you could be doing today. And the fact that you are here to watch someone who was a total stranger to you to talk about bigger branding for sales mastery says a lot to you as well. So my suggestion is that you take out a pad of paper, something to write with, in case I share something that's worth writing down, because what I'm going to share with you is what you see on the screen, which are three big branding secret ways to create a magnificent brand that will establish your uniqueness and value, communicate a clearer, stronger message, and attract those hungry, high-paying clients, and more importantly, to ensure that your marketing is going to work. We'll talk more about that later. Now, be sure to stick around to the end because I only have about 30 to 45 minutes. I want us to interact, have some Q&A at the end. One of the things that we agreed on is throughout my presentation, if one of you would like to ask me a question or interact with me, you certainly can do that. Simply, quote unquote, raise your hand in the chat box and Daniela will let me know if someone wants to interact with me. And the other reason I'd like you to stay to the end is because I have a free gift that I wanna to give to each of you, which will enable you to dig deeper into these three secrets so that you can start getting more clients and making more money immediately. But make no mistake about it, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to promote anything. This is all about you, the brand called you. Because one of the things that is so important today is that we live in a brand conscious world. And it's becoming more and more important to do everything that you can to stand out, get notes and be remembered so that you can attract the kind of clients that you're looking for. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions about what some of you know and don't know about this thing called branding. But one thing is true, and that is branding is the foundational piece of the most successful, successful companies in America. Make no mistake about it. If you go around America, if you look at multi-billion dollar companies to small businesses, they have made a decision to put out a brand as opposed to products or services, because that's two different things. And we live in a kind of world where we are basically brand conscious. We have our preferences. If we, if we go into a supermarket or any kind of store and we grab our shopping cart and we go down the aisle that sells laundry detergent and our mind says, I want to get the one that gets out ground in dirt, most of us think of what? Tide. If we're looking for some kind of dishwashing liquid and we want the one that's going to give us young looking hands, what do we think of? You can put it in the chat box. We might think of ivory liquid. If you don't want grease on your dishes, you think of Dawn. And so we live in a brand conscious world where it's all about the brand and nothing but the brand, because one of the things that's so important today is that you have to make a choice. Do you want to put out a brand or do you want to be bland? Because people do prefer to do business with companies that put out brands. And I think a lot of that is because we know what to expect when we have that brand, don't we? There's no, there's no mystery. 
about what it's going to taste like if we go into McDonald's. We know exactly what's going to happen if we walk into a Starbucks. We associate something with that brand itself. And so for you as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, particularly those of you who are offering services, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, you really have to decide, do you want to put something out into the world that the world cannot ignore? You know, it's really something. I read a statistic before the pandemic, which said that there were three billion, no, excuse me, seven, seven billion websites on the World Wide Web, seven billion in countless social networks. And so what we're finding here, especially since the pandemic, is that it's getting harder and harder to stand out and get noticed. In fact, for a lot of owners, what they're finding, and may, this may be true for some of you, is that you feel as if no one's paying attention to you. You sometimes feel invisible. And we also have a situation whereby if people come across your website, if they come across you on social media, whatever your platform may be, they're, they're, they may be making certain assumptions about you in terms of what it is that you do and what it is that you can provide them without really understanding what your brand is about. So three of the biggest challenges that I want you to keep in mind are what you see here on the screen. And the first one is to know that there's more to branding than your logo, colors, and anything else that visually represents your brand. Make no mistake about it, a brand is not simply a logo. It's not as simple as simply focusing on the aesthetics or your color scheme. And in fact, I would say to people who have a hard time understanding that a brand is more than what you can see in terms of your website, in terms of your social media, in terms of your logo, let's take Coke and Pepsi. I doubt it's a Coca-Cola drink is preferred Coke because it's in a red can and the Pepsi people because it's in a blue can. It's what's inside the can that counts. And so my question to each of you is to start asking yourself, gosh, what's going to be inside my can so that people prefer me? And the second challenge is a resistance to viewing branding as a priority. And I put this up here because I'd like you each to do me a favor. On a sheet of paper, I want you to draw a triangle, okay? And on that triangle, at the top of it, please write the word brand, the lower left-hand corner, the word market, and the lower right-hand corner, the word sell. So you have brand, market, sell. And what that is, is what I call the golden triangle. And it's based on proven data and research, which says that the most successful companies in America, regardless of their size, understand and embrace that if you wished to scale and you, you decide what scale means to you, maybe you're looking for more clients, maybe it's more about influence, impact. Maybe it's more about the difference and the contribution that you want to make. Maybe it's about how much money you wish to make. But you decide what the word scale means is that they follow a proven model, which is simply brand market sell. That's simple. You nail your brand down first, and then you market and sell the heck out of your brand. It's always branding followed by marketing, followed by selling. They're like a three-legged stool. All three legs have to be in place. If one leg is wobbly, if one leg is missing, you're in trouble. But it also suggests that one leg is not more important than the other. Branding is certainly not more important than marketing. Marketing is not more important than selling. Selling is not more important than branding. They're equally important. But the three of them have to be meshed together, working in harmony to have the results that you're looking for. And the way that I separate the three is to say that the job of branding is to differentiate you. The job of marketing is to get people to notice what makes you different, what makes you special, what makes you appealing, and then want that difference. And then the job of selling is to get people to pay for that difference. Uh, you may have missed it. Let me get that to you again. I don't want to start preaching here, Dion, because they call me the brand and evangelist, but let me just break it down this way. The job of branding is to get you known. Marketing will get you found and selling will get you paid. Can I get a high five and a hallelujah and an amen in the chat box from somebody, please? You got to get known. You got to get found and you got to get paid. It's that simple. Because it's all about what? Prioritizing. 
It's all about sequencing. And so what companies do today is they make sure that their branding is right. Because if your marketing is not working, it's typically because your branding isn't compelling. And so therefore, instead of looking at branding as a nice to have, it has to be a must have. It has to be something that you embrace so that you can write this down, so that you can stand out, get noticed and be remembered for offering something unique so that your God can reward you for your individuality. Oh, let me keep going here. Now look at the third one, and that is getting your marketing to be more effective. So here's the deal. I hear all the horror stories of people who have bought the shiny objects. They spent money on this kind of, of promotion. They spent money on perhaps creating a course or a program and and quite often, it didn't turn into the results that they were looking for. And so the idea here is to make sure that the branding and the marketing are working together so that your marketing can do what you want it to do, especially for those of you who are thinking of or are currently putting together any kind of sales funnel, if you're planning on running paid ads, if you're thinking of hosting a challenge, offering a course, creating an offer, whatever it may be, it has to be rooted in your branding so that the marketing can create the results that you are looking for. So my question to each of you, and you can put your response in the chat box, please, chat box, please is, are you leveraging branding to its fullest potential in elevating your business? Because there's a lot of layers to branding. There's a lot, I call them Easter eggs. And there's a tendency that when people hear the word branding, they think of the visual stuff. And so in my world, you've got people out there who, who maybe do websites, that aspect of branding, or someone does design in terms of the colors and the aesthetics, or someone does telling your brand story, or somebody is going to help you with brand archetypes, or someone is going to help you with what are called you know, promotional products. There's a lot of layers to it. But the main thing is to ask yourself, are you really leveraging what's possible for each of you when you step into the power of having a phenomenal, brand, a phenomenal brand that can do what you want it to do. So what I thought I would do to you, do, do to you. <laughs> so what I thought I would do today for each of you is to share with you three big branding secrets that are designed to make sure that not only is your marketing going to work, but to ensure you that when you integrate what I am going to provide along with whatever marketing and selling activities you are currently doing or are planning to do, ensure you that your tomorrow can be better than your yesterday, to know that what's coming will be better than what's been, because with the right kind of branding, the worst can be behind you and the best can be in front of you. Does that sound good? Give me some love in the chat box, okay? Because the first thing that I wanna share with you is that it's all about sequence which means don't put the cart before the horse. And so when you go back to the whole idea behind around the golden triangle of brand market sell, what it simply means is don't put the tile down before the cabinets are up. You know, Dion mentioned to me that I've had the opportunity and the privilege of helping over 100,000 small businesses from over 600 different industries in 30 plus years. I've impacted that many. And one of the things that I've often seen is that people are all over the place. They're all out of sequence. And so often people say things like me, uh, to me along the lines of, oh my God, I wish I had met you years ago. Oh my God, I should have made sure that my branding was in place. Oh my God, I should have realized that the branding is more than simply a logo and stuff that people can see. Oh my God, Jerry, I thought it was all about my colors. No, it's not about your colors. It's about how are you showing up today in the midst of the marketplace that we are dealing with. I have people who say things like me, you know, Jerry, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that in terms of my marketing and blah, 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 blah. I, Jerry, I, it's all about lead generation. It's, I got to get conversions. I go, well, wait a minute. What about your brand? Are you really giving people a reason to choose you? 
Have you nailed down your uniqueness? Are you clear on your message? What's your brand promise? What outcomes do you deliver? How do you deliver value in a way no one else can? These are all branding issues that have to be addressed and then integrated with your marketing. And what that means is like, if you were going to build a house, you don't put the drywall up. Maybe before you put the drywall up, you need to install the plumbing first. And so what we have are a lot of owners out there who don't have their plumbing installed. And they're way ahead of themselves. And they're getting low to, to no returns on their ads. They're not getting conversions. They're not attracting the high value clients that they're seeking. And so I assure you that after this presentation today, you can say goodbye to all that kind of stuff. So what I want you to do right now is you need to go ahead and fasten your seatbelt and put your trays up and get in an upright position because we're gonna take off because I'm gonna give you three big branding secrets in the time that we have. And I'm looking for interaction and Q and A, okay? Are you with me? Say, oh yeah, in the chat box. Yes. So here's the, thank you, Dion. <laughs> so here's the first big branding secret. So let me give you some context here. Again, I don't wanna make assumptions about what you know and don't know. There's five types of brands. The first kind of brand is what's called a company brand, typically known as a corporate brand. Think McDonald's, Pepsi-Cola, Apple, right? Those are all corporate brands. And then the second kind of brand are what are called product brands. So for example, Pepsi has a product called Dr. Pepper and McDonald's has iMac and, and uh, excuse me, a Big Mac and Apple has i this and i that, right? So those are product brands. And the third kind of brand are called service brands. And that's for those of you who have a company and you're offering services. Think Vistaprint, think Stanley Steamer Carpet Cleaner, right? Or number four are nonprofits. And I'd listen, I tell people all the time, United Way, American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, those are brands. Make no mistake about it. The, the only difference is they're looking for donations instead of, instead of um, uh, paying customers. And then the fifth kind of brand, which may be for many of you, if not all of you, are what are called personal brands, where you are branding around your birth name, your government, government name, whatever words you want to give to that. Think Dr. Phil, Dr. Roz, Susie Ornan, Rachel Ray, Oprah, blah, 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 blah. Now, the key in all of this is to understand that there's a difference when it comes to branding expertise as opposed to a physical product. Now, my sweet spot is how to brand and market expertise. OK, because if you don't understand the nuances of what goes into service branding and personal branding, you could end up going down the wrong path where you are engaging in branding activities that are not suited for you. Now, just a little bit about myself over and above what Dion was sharing about me. I'm what's called a brand strategist, as opposed to a brand designer. And so just like someone who may own a house cleaning service says they don't do logos, well, I don't, they don't do windows. Well, I tell people I don't do logos, swag bags, tote bags, websites, and things that people can see because great brands are built more strategically than they are visually. And in terms of my background, I went to USC. I'm a Trojan. I don't know if you see it behind me. We're making a comeback in football. I did my undergrad and grad work at USC. I didn't cheat my way in. We were part of the cheating scandal a few years ago. I attended the Marshall School of Business. I got two degrees, my MBA degree, my bachelor degree with honors. I majored in marketing with deep study in, in branding, blah, blah, blah. And then when I came out of SC, I went to work for Procter & Gamble. Now, if you know, if, 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 if those of you who know anything about P&G, they wrote the book on branding. They're the number one branding company on the planet. So I was one of those big branding guys. 
and I worked in the juice and drink industry for a minute. And then I started my brand development and training company full time in 1985. Yes, this is my 38th year. And so let's, let's get, you know, for, for, for those who need to know, I was 10 years old with a lemonade stand. <laughs> okay, when I started my company, Jesus was wearing sandals, dinosaurs are roaming the earth, and something was new called a PC. Have you heard about it? What is that? A personal computer? Really? What does it do? Okay, anyway, I'm dating myself. But my point is that I read an article once which said that the average American changes their job or career 10 to 15 times in a lifetime. I've never done anything but brandy. My entire adult life, I live and breathe brandy. And I love all things brandy. And I've made it my life's work. And so in the branding universe, you can Google me. I'm all over the internet. If I'm regarded as a bona fide branding guy, the real deal. Because truth be told, there are a lot of people out there who say they do branding. And then you find out, oh, you do logos. Oh, you do, <laughs> you do pretty colors. Oh, your idea of branding is let's shoot some videos and get them on social media. No, 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 no. Okay. As people like to say, I do the hard stuff. So what's my point? You got to know how to brand expertise a certain way. Write this down. In the eyes of your buyer, because you're not selling something tangible that people can see, taste, touch, smell, or hear, you are selling vapor to them. You're selling the invisible. And unlike with a product, because what can we do? We can see, taste, touch, smell, or hear the product. We can, we can test it out in advance, right? Before we shell out any money. We can take the kids into the pet shop and play with the puppy. Back in the day before the pandemic, we could go into Trader Joe's and try the food sample. We can do whatever it is that we have to do to decide if that physical object is something that we want. Now, I want you to, I want you to grab onto that because my sweet spot is how to make your invisible visible and have it show up in the minds and the heart of your buyer as if it were a tangible item. And so the key to that is to make sure that you are standing out and not blending in, which means that you have to embrace in your heart that you were born to stand out and not blend in. Now, that presents an interesting challenge, because if you are selling the invisible, in the eyes of the buyer, they're going to slot you, write this down. By, by the way, the reason I say write it down is for two reasons. One, <laughs> when you turn 21, after you turn 21, you got to write it down so we don't forget. <laughs> okay. And the other was, I was an adjunct professor of branding, marketing, and advertising for 10 straight years at four universities, even as a weekend. So I'm used to telling people to write it down. So please don't be insulted by that when I make that request. But let me just say this. What I've learned is that in the eyes of your buyer, your target audience, you can decide how do you want to show up. And there's three levels that you can play at in terms of you being able to manipulate and control what's called perception. And the reason why the Wall Street Journal and the most successful companies in America, if not around the world, put out brands and not services or products is because branding allows you to shape perceptions, which means that it gives you the ability to seize control over how people see you. And that's done by branding, not by marketing. That's another conversation. Now, stay with me on this. You have three ways that you can show up. Me too, me special, or me only. <laughs> if you are showing up as a me too, which I, which I, um, uh, also use another name, which is me also, me to me also. The perception is you're just another penguin in the flock. Another slice in the loaf. You're just a jar of mayo. You're just a card in the mouth. You're just blending in with the rest of the crowd. However, 
brands like brands like Nike and Starbucks have shown us that the products they offer are less important than the brands they market and sell. Oh, I'm getting excited here. Because when you put out a brand, what the consumer knows is that is what they're going to receive from you that is distinct. Because unless you are distinct, you risk being extinct. And the moment someone feels that you're really not that different than anyone else, they have commoditized you, which means that you are forced to, to compete on price, whereby all people really want to know is, what's your price? So when you are, write this down, when you are showing up as a me only, excuse me, as a me too brand, the perception is that you are an imitator. Not good. The second level is what's called me special. Now, that may be some of you who may put in the chat box right now. You might say, no, Jerry, I'm different. I'm not like everybody else. I set myself apart from others in my space. I'm not like everybody else in my industry. I go, really, prove it to me. So the question there for you is, are you relevant? Do you matter? in the eyes of your target audience. It's amazing, in this great country of ours, we have a history of rock star brands that were rocking it, that lost their relevance, and then died on the vine. Does the name MySpace ring a bell? Hmm. Whoever thought Blockbuster would go out of business? What happened to Radio Shack, AOL, Blackberry? Look, look at all the closures of retail businesses, giants, in the last 10 years because I didn't see a force of nature coming that changed the entire habits of consumers in America called Amazon. So when you, when you are playing at the me special level, you are looked upon, write this down, as being an impersonator. The level you want to play at is me only. <laughs> well, you can say to your market, I am the only hama hama that can do hama hama for you. Because when you are playing at the level of me only, you are distinct because you made the decision to not only stand out and not blend in, you made the decision to lead the crowd and not follow the crowd. You've made the strategic choice to shuffle the deck and turn the tables in your favor by making it at a point to deviate and not conform. So how do you do that? I want each of you right now to think about what I have on the screen and put your answers in the chat box and we can talk about it. I want you to picture your ideal client because, of, because the kind of brands that I see for each of you should be designed to do what? Attract your dream client, your ideal client, your perfect fit client. They're ready to invest now, client. How many of you want one of those? Say, oh yeah, that's me, that's me. Put it in the chat box, right? And that's what we're talking about here. You want, I want you to think right now about who your ideal client is. I want you to picture that person or that company in your mind. And, and then literally to, to yourself, ask yourself, man, what, what, what were they sick and tired of putting up with? What's not working that they, that they wanted to have work better? What did they want to have? What did they want to change? In other words, why did they come to me? And so what you want to do is nail down what are called your drivers? These are branding drivers. They, they are the things that when you get to the phase of brand building and you're building the brand out marketing wise, you can now take those drivers that you've identified in your branding and you feed it into your marketing machinery so that you can have what? Client engagement. So think about right now, man, why did they come to me? 
Don't think about so much who they are demographically, age, income, sex, occupation, unemployed, unemployed. Don't worry about all that. I want you to think more of what's called psychographics, which has to do with what motivates people, which then leads into brand secret number two, which is, hey, it's time to claim your payday, <laughs> okay? It's time to claim your, your, your payday. Okay, so here's, here's a question for everyone. Play along with me, please. It's been said that there are millions of brands that are vying for our attention at any given moment. I'm not kidding. It's like we, we live in this brand crowded universe where it's all about the brand and nothing about the brand. I'm not kidding. You, you just start thinking about what's around you visually and all the billboards and the advertising and television and all of that. You understand where I'm coming from. But here's my question. In the chat box, I want you to please type in what was the name of the last brand that you bought? I'm going to go to the chat box. You could say Days Bread. Oh, here we go. This is good. Starbucks, Pepsi, Keith said JBL, Samsung. Oh, this is great. Lululemon, Blue Buffalo Pet Foods, Sprite. Look at, look at them, Dion. They're going crazy. Look at this brand conscious group we got here. Oh my God, HP, Tide, Fitbit, wow. Okay, this is good. Sam's Club Gasoline. <laughs> okay, here, <laughs> was that price? <laughs> no, okay, but was it, brand, was it the brand name? Okay, here's the second question. Look at the screen, please. What was the reason you chose that brand? Because reality is you had other options, right? You had other choices. There were other alternatives. Why did you choose that brand? Look at them, look at them. Oh my God, quality, ease, taste, perceived quality, the experience, what else? The value, oh my goodness, Long longevity. I was thirsty. <laughs> quality, texture, wow. This is great. Reputation, now, this is interesting for me. You want to know what all of you have in common? Even though you have a multitude of brand names, you had a wide choice of reasons that you put in, you all share one word, and that word is, I'll put it on the screen, because. You chose that brand because. So the question for each of you is, what is your because? Are you truly differentiating yourself and giving people an authentic, compelling reason to choose you over other choices? So often I come across websites and social media platforms and so many service-based entrepreneurs. So I'm really talking to those of you who offer services, okay? That's my sweet spot of working with service-based entrepreneurs. I do very little product branding, by the way. I primarily work with solopreneurs, small budgets who wanna go big, okay? That's just what I do. And in order to uncover your uniqueness so it can be amplified, so that you can then magnify your impact, you have to write this down, Answer the two foremost questions that any buyer has when they come across and experience you. Why are you different? How, excuse me. How are you different? And why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? That's what they want to know. That's a branding issue, not marketing. I got choices. This is me being the buyer. I got other options from people like you. Why should I work with you? Are you, are you telling me that you're different because of your credentials? You know, I, I tell people all the time, if you feel the need to want to tell someone about your education and your degrees and your certifications and your training and how smart you are and your satisfied client list, tell your parents. They'll be impressed. 
When you're talking to a prospect, especially a, a grade A, high quality prospect client that you're looking to land, they want to know two things. How are you different and why are you different? What's your cause? See, here's the deal. And I threw this in for free. It's always why you versus other choices when you agree. So the goal for each of you is to configure your brand. And when I say configure your brand, some of you may need to create a brand from scratch, but I also do a lot of what's called rebrand. I get a lot of people who come to me and say, hey, Jerry, I want to have the strongest brand possible, especially here in the new year. So we, 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 it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's more about what's missing. So we're retooling, revamping, re-engineering, reimagining the brand so that you can stay ahead of the curve. And big companies rebrand all the time, right? And then I have some people, quite frankly, whose brand just sucks, okay? It's stale, stuck, stalled, ain't doing much of anything. We got to fix it. Nonetheless, here's the deal. You've got to get people to choose you, brand A or brand B. Now, I'll share this with you. I'm in L.A., I'm a single guy. Ladies, help a, help a brother out here. I don't cook. <laughs> now, in the early days of the pandemic, I actually took online cooking lessons. I ended up getting an Instapot, which, which was hilarious because I made some chili and I thought I was going to blow up when I opened it up. You know, it's like, oh my God, is it the, do I cut the red wire or the blue wire? I swear to God, I thought it was going to blow up. And then I, and then I got a, I got a, I got my air fryer. I love my air fryer. Okay. But anyway, but the fact is I don't cook. I'm a, I'm a takeout and delivery guy. And when I want to have food delivered, I prefer Grubhub. That's my preference. That's who I choose. There's nothing wrong with Uber Eats. There's nothing wrong with DoorDash. Some of you may prefer Coke over Pepsi or vice versa, Nike over Adidas, Adidas or vice versa. Hey, when I do ride share, I'm typically a Lyft guy. Nothing wrong with Uber. My point is, each of you must achieve what you see in the upper left-hand corner. And that is what's called, in my world, brand preference which simply means that you are distinguishing, distinguishing yourself in a manner that allows your target audience to not only see you as the uh, best choice and the smart choice, also the only choice, the preferred choice by showcasing your uniqueness and putting yourself in the spotlight, putting something out into the world that nobody has heard, seen, uh, or, or, or come across before so that you can have the success you're looking for. How many of you are ready to bring the ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching? If you're, if you're right with me right now, I want everybody to put up a fist like this. Come on with me now. Put up a fist like this and go ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. That's the game now. It's time for some of you all to raise your game. And one of the main ways that you can have, have, raise your game is to have what's called your secret sauce. See, remember I said, how are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? So here's the whole thing about that. Read this slide. The most successful service-based companies, like each of you, from Amazon to Vistaprint to Stanley Steamer, they anchored their success in a formula. In other words, they have a system, a process, a method for getting results that showcases how they serve and deliver. Which means that some of you may need to go gangster right now. Excuse me, I'm originally from Detroit. I don't know where that came from. It may be time for some of you all to, to not only flip the script, but be radical. Which means don't offer services anymore. Say you have a process, a method, a system. In other words, you have a way of delivering value in a way that nobody else can. Do you realize if you just tell people, here are my services, that immediately puts you in what's called red ocean market space, where now you're just another penguin, you're just another bird in the flock. 
I'm slotting you. I'm a real estate agent. I got great services. Okay, I'll put you to the real estate pile. I'm a, oh, I'm a financial advisor. I put you to the financial uh, uh, planning pile. I'm a life coach. Oh my goodness, another one of those. I'm gonna put you into the life coaching pile. Remember, you've got to shape perceptions here because watch this, the more authentically different you are, the more, the more you make your brand worth saving ass. Put your focus on getting across how you are different and why you are better as opposed to touting your services or expertise. And you're going to find that, that people are going to come running to you. And the way you serve and the way you deliver becomes your because statement. Okay? And that because... Your secret sauce is that special thing that you do that makes your brand worth more and can make you rich. I'm not kidding. You want to get to six figures fast, if not seven figures, and I'm just getting started. I know folk out here that are creating six figure, seven figure businesses like that because of the day, everything that they're doing here is what they've done. And check this out. Big companies do this all the time. They nail down their because. I was watching a TV commercial one time for Bounty Paper Towel, P&G, right, where I used to work. And on the screen, they, they split open the paper towel and they said, Bounty, the quicker upper, let the spills begin. And then, they, and, and then they take the paper towel and they go, look, Bounty is two times more exorbitant than any other paper towel because we have something called trap and lock technology. I go, wow, trap and lock, trap and lock technology. Nobody else has that. That's a heck of a because. Okay, you with me? Anybody remember KFC back in the day? What was it called? The Colonels. What was the Colonels known for? Anybody remember? Put it in the chat box. Yeah, the original secret recipe. The original brand, the, the original, the, the, the magical blend of, a, of a 11 herbs and spices. So I'm going to wrap up here, but I just wanted to throw in a, a few things. Convey your unique value through your brand promise and message. Those are some other core ingredients. So I want you to start thinking about what's going to be your blend. How do we tap into your DNA? how you think, how you serve, how you lead, how you deliver, all your perspective, all your wisdom, all those things that make you magnificent and a member of this fine organization comes together so that you can say that you have a level of value unlike no one else has. I call it the $100,000 rule. And my, and my question to each of you is if you had absolutely no limitations, on declaring the difference you'll make in a client's life, what ridiculously irresistible promise are you willing to make and juicy message to convey on delivering that difference? That's what the big branders and shot callers do. If they're playing at a level of saying, I've got something that you've been looking for and you can only get it from me. I know you've been looking for A, B, and C from someone like me. You've been setting up a D, E, and F. Guess what? I got the A, B, and C. You could only get it from me. Put it up again, everybody. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. So anyway, I, I just drew these in. Uh, I've been very blessed over 30-plus years. I've helped many people, many people. These are just some clients in the last two years that I've branded, personal brands primarily. They're all over the place. And, um, you know, they're all happy and smiling and making money and whatever. So to close this out, some of you may be saying, yikes. <laughs> I told Dion, I don't do tips. I said, I'm not going to sit up here and just give you all tips. I said, I came to give you all value. Was that okay? I hope you all appreciated me doing that. I do have a giveaway for each of you. JerryFosterBranding.com forward slash captivate. If you go there right now or when you get a chance, my most popular free gift. Oh, my God. People, people love this. It's called Stand Out and Captivate. 
It's a one hour training where I go deeper on the stuff that I've been, been saying here today. Uh, you can download it for free. And what I put in that video training, uh, it's only about an hour long and it's broken up into bits, about bits and bites. So it's easily digestible. But my clients pay top dollar for these tips today. I'm going to give that to you for free uh, for Scott and Dion having me here today. And I also want to throw this in as well. And if any of you would like to have a one hour brainstorming session with me, uh, which I normally charge about $800 or $1,000 for, you're welcome to do that. If you have a brainstorming session with me, I do not sell. I don't do that. All right. So uh, I'm doing this out of my heart. I, I, I don't think I've ever done this where I just offer it on a talk. But anyway, there's my cell. And you can send me a text. Say, Jerry, I love you. No, just kidding. <laughs> just uh, this thing. just uh, say, hey, Jerry, uh, I'd love to have a brainstorming session with you. And uh, we'll do that by Zoom. And I'll take a look at whatever you want me to take a look at. I'll look at your website. I'll look at your social media. I'll look at your messaging. I'll look at anything. Give you some feedback. And again, I don't sell. Uh, business comes to me. I don't have to sell. Okay, so that's it. Um, so Dion, want to be open this up for some Q&A? First, Jerry, let me just say thank you. I was anticipating this for since before Christmas, and I was so grateful that Scott uh, said, sure, come on and, and have Jerry come in. And you just exceeded my expectations. Oh. Um, I knew you were going to be great. I've never, ever heard your webinar like this. And I know we've already did some consultations and I'm looking forward to you helping me further. No, no joke. I love this presentation because it was so worthwhile. I know every business owner can benefit, including, you know, our CEO. I know he's smart as I don't know what, but I'm sure he got value as every other business owner did. So uh, thank you so much. I know this was great value for you and I know you get paid a lot of money. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. I really appreciate oh, you. You're welcome. Everyone should know flattery will get you everywhere with me. So, <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit a stop share, hit the stop share, and we're going to, let's go into the gallery and uh, let's chat. Whoever wants to interact with me, uh, we got more than enough time. Mr. Foster. Yes. Awesome stuff, man. I really loved it. I love your energy. It was incredible. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, I just wanted to, well, first, a uh, uh, little something here. I've been dropping a link in the chat for anybody who wants to share their information. We'll be sending out a copy of this recording today um, to anybody who fills out the form, as well as sharing a list of participants who've opted in to share their information. Link is in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there again one more time. And <clears throat> for what you said earlier about kind of getting extreme, it reminded me of this movie called The Guilt Trip with Seth Rogen and Barbara Streisand. Have you seen this? No. So um, the guy, he's basically uh, down on his luck. He's trying to sell a, a all natural cleaner, right? It doesn't smell too great, but he's going to Procter and Gamble and he's on this uh, product tour and he's trying to sell it to all the big wigs and he's failing left and right. And the whole time, you know, because it's all natural, his mom's like, well, you know, it's safe. Won't you just drink it in front of those people? Just drink it. Right. And at the very end, it was his last shot. He said, you know what? Screw it. And he took the cleaner and he just downed it in front of everybody and it just raised the eyes of everybody. And he goes, with this product, and I'm paraphrasing here because of Seth Rogen, with this product, if you drink this, if your kids drink this, they won't get hurt. <laughs> and so, and that's and that's how he made the sale. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's about it's about just getting yourself out there and being absolutely different. So good job, man. Yeah, you gotta dare to be different. I mean, it's one of those things where in today's day and age. Like I said, unless you're distinct, you risk being extinct. And so what people don't understand is that marketing's job is not to differentiate you. Marketing's job is to get people to pay attention to what makes you different. And when I say different, I mean authentically different. Mm -hmm. so, that that. so that you're swimming in what's called blue ocean market space, which means that when they come across your name, you're known for something fresh. So let me give you a couple of examples. So here's what big brands do. They nail down that gap 
This is what I'm, I'm throwing this in for free too. Where, what are people looking for from you they cannot find? So you don't tell people what you do. You tell people who you are. Let's take Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is not in the business of marketing and selling life coaching mm -hmm. and motivational talks. This guy, 30 years ago, declared his big brand idea as life on your own terms. Mm -hmm. He's never deviated from that. Mm -hmm. To this day, this guy's multi-billion dollar empire as a quote unquote coach falls underneath that umbrella. The Airbnb guy said, we're not in the business of home rentals. We're in the business of people belonging anywhere. Oprah said, she said, I didn't, I didn't build my empire from promoting a talk show. She said, my brand was ladies lead your fulfilled life. UPS, sometimes it's a sentence, said, we get your packages to their destination on time. DollarShadeClub.com guy goes, we deliver high quality razor blades to your front door for a few bucks a month. Sold the brand for $5 billion within five years. So what I'm trying to do here is to get you guys to start thinking strategically in terms of, okay, okay, what are people looking for? They cannot find that I can have associate with my, with my brand name. That's, Gary, that's, I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So behind is this you, everybody? Is this youthful? Give me some. Give me some feedback because I'm coming. Yeah, about. it's phenomenal. It's, it's good? phenomenal. Okay. It is. Um, I see in the back of you. I know you just published a new book yeah. uh, called Game Changer. Do you talk about that? In no, that's uh, a that's an anthology book, and I did my little chapter. <laughs> but it's a good oh, chapter. Okay. It's Game Changer Volume Seven. Oh, wow. I okay. share I share some a valuable lesson in my early years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, but it's yeah. good. Yeah, you should buy it. I did. <laughs> you did? Okay, good. Yeah. Did. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, the Game Changer Volume 7. But I want to do Q&A yet. Who else? All right, Mr. Foster. We had a comment in the chat. It looks like they're having a maybe, hopefully it's just a typo in the URL, but they're saying the form or the URL wasn't great. So is there an alternative way to reach you? Okay, here, here it is, right here. Hold on. I know it worked because I was just on it. Okay. All right, so. It works. See it? I just got All on All right, it. cool. Well, maybe they have something with their browser then. All yeah, right, yeah. Glenn has his hand up. Glenn, what you got? Yeah. All right, hey, Jerry, man, I think you've blown everybody out today. Like, seriously, man, this was just phenomenal. Um, my question is, and, and I might be going a little bit ahead of myself and everything, but like, okay, so let's just say you have the perfect brand and like, let's say they, you know, uh, somebody works with you, they got the perfect brand. How then, how then do you get that out to people? Like, how do you, how then do you market that brand? Like, what's the next step after you like identified your niche and all that good stuff? How, how do people find out who you are? Well, the first thing that I do with people is I muscle test their brand. Uh, I'll put this in a chat box. I created an assessment tool nine years ago, and where I enable people in three to five minutes to muscle test their brand and see where you're strong, where you're weak, and what the missing pieces may be that could be hurting or hindering your success. Mm -hmm. Now, I call it a quiz. It's the thing that's so funny about that. I created this in 2014 when nobody was even doing quizzes. <laughs> and everybody, got to have a quiz. I anyway, it's so funny. But anyway, a lot of people have raved about it. So the first thing that I do is I make sure that you've got all the key components in place. So that's a quiz. I, I urge some of you all to take it, by the way, because you'll, you'll hit the submit button. You'll get a report of findings to see where you're strong and where you're weak. That's the first thing before you start thinking about so I'm not trying to skirt answering your question, but before I ever recommend, well, what marketing should you do? I got to make sure that you've got all the right pieces in place so that you have the strongest body, voice, and spirit possible. So you can call me a brand architect. You want to call me something. And then you go to phase two called brand building, where now the goal is to bring that brand to life mm. by creating funnels and all this other stuff. So I'm always a little hesitant to say, do this. I need to know who you are before I tell you what to do, dude, okay? That make, yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. And, and I knew that I was going to step ahead. 
I just kind of that that's where my mind goes. It's just like, okay, what's next? Like, what what did you get it? You know, well, that's but, also a so function of the. In- ahead. I understand. That's also a function of the industry you're in. Mm. in terms of how do people in your target audience find people like yourself? Makes sense. Okay, thank you, there, Jay. Yeah, but the main thing for you to think about is how to position yourself as being preeminent in your space, number one in your specialty. People have to see you as being a cut above, best best in class, top shelf, panache, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we'll figure out what to say, who to say it to, and how best to say it, all right? Makes sense. Remember, you're talking to somebody who's been doing this his entire adult life. I should, you know, Jerry, you're single. You've been doing branding your adult life. Get a life. You know, you get a dog. You know, I don't have a dog or something. Okay. okay. But who else? Go ahead. Patricia has her hands up. What's up, Patricia? Okay. And I mainly work with women, but 98% of my clients are female entrepreneurs. Well, dang. I think, no, I think what it is, women, women are, women want to grow. They, they're, man, they're expanding their mind. Men are like, eh, you know, eh, you know, stuck in their way. I love working with women. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the information today. It's uh, really been very helpful. And I had the same question as someone else did um, in the chat that in um, in what you do, can you help someone figure out what is that secret sauce or their because, yes. why they're different? And that's a, that's a specialty of mine. Yeah. Okay. And that secret. Thank you for the question. That, and that that has to be configured in what's called within what's called a branding framework. There's a certain way to lay out that secret sauce so that you can get what's called more buy-in. Okay. Yeah. And then that secret sauce, once that's nailed, you can then monetize through your courses and your programs. Mm-hmm. It's two different things. But yes, that's a forte of mine. Great. Thank yeah, you. we should we should have, but you know, have a brainstorming session with me. Yeah, that's what I would love to do. Thank you. Heck yeah, but I'm putting that out there. You guys would be crazy not to do that. <laughs> so, um, what? I'm a, I'm what, a giver. I'm a giver, not a taker. So, what's your process like when you when you get into one of the your first meetings? Um, like, what's the exploration? And a How's brainstorming that? session to, to see where the gaps are. Okay. That's my assessment. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm very process oriented. Um, I'm very structured, but yet I do allow for the fluidity and the creativity, you know, all of that. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm all about structure and accountability and putting things in writing. Right on. on my website, jerryfosterbranding.com, I have a hundred letters and videos from people who experience me. And they, they, their letters and videos are there. You can read and watch what other people say. Right on. One thing they talk about is how I work with them. Yeah. I'm Anybody also, else have anything also, uh, they want to? Yeah, I have a with. question. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'm also very yeah. faith based. Yeah, I'm looking to. Uh, I'm trying to meet uh, pharmaceutical and insurance clients for what's called a white paper, uh, writing assignments. And what what advice would you have for that? Because uh, it's very specialized. Like pharmaceutical companies usually outsource that to uh, writing. Like think think tanks and other. Uh, I got it. Like I'm that. gonna okay. I'm gonna answer your question and answer for yeah. everybody in a different sure. way. Tap into your zone of genius. Okay. So here's what I mean. In branding, particularly when you are offering expertise, you have to nail down that one thing, that one thing that you and only you do that probably comes hard to other people, but easily to you, that becomes part of your crowning jewel. And I bet you have that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> we all have, come on, he's smiling. I got him smiling. <laughs> See, listen, everybody. Like I said, let go of saying, I got services, I got skills. Hell, everybody's got services and skills, okay? Tap into that special thing about you that makes you so endearing to other people. Part of what I do, Keith, is I help people uncover that because it's difficult for some people because they're too close to themselves. You can't read the label when you're inside the bottle. But that's the answer. What's the one thing that comes either to you that's hard to most others that you and only you can probably do? Thank you so much, Jerry. Let's pivot the brand around that. Okay. Was that useful, everybody? Yes, yes. And that becomes the basis of your me only. 
No, you can have a me only statement. I'm the only hama hama that can do hama hama. Woo, really? Remember, me only, me too, me special. Uh uh, you don't want me special, me only. Me too, you want me only. That's where the money is. That's where you have impact. When you are a one of a kind, highly distinctive service entrepreneur, putting something out into the world that only you are doing because there's only one you. You know, Keith, um, like I've had authors come to me. I've had um, people who have certain skill sets, accountants. And one time I was speaking at an event and someone said, I'm an accountant and there's millions of other accountants out there. And we all do the same thing. We pretty much took the same training. We got the same education. I go, well, wait a minute. Unless you have a twin, there's only one you. Right. No one does it the way you do it. The way you think, the way you saw, the way you serve, the way you lead, the way you deliver. That's all part of what's called your brand DNA. So in what great brands do is they tap into, especially in a service business like each of you, you tap into your DNA and you, and you, and you anchor your brand in those shining, distinctive qualities that allows you to deliver value in a way that nobody else can, that no one can duplicate, imitate, or negate. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank ching, you. Ching, ching. <laughs> Isn't this fun? This is. <laughs> you got to be different. Man. I tell that famous story of Walt Disney. He was sitting at a bench, on a bench, he and his wife in the early 50s at an amusement park. He turns to his wife and he says, I'm going to open up my own amusement park one day. And she goes, why would you want to do that? They're loud, they're dirty, the employees are rude. He goes, exactly. My park won't be like that. And what do we to this day associate with the Disney brand? Magical. Hmm. We have a... Um... Uh, one of our members here, he actually has a whole presentation on Disneyland and um, that magical experience that they deliver. And one of the examples that he always brings up is um, those families that come in on road trips and Disney's aware of it. And when they drive in, they have something for the kids when they get out the car. They got a beer for dad and, they, you know, they're escorting the whole family. It's a magical thing from the moment you step out. I've, I've seen that video. Yeah. yeah. Which is controversial for some people. Because hmm. some, some customers don't like that. They think they're being monitored and tracked oh. yeah i want to yeah, hear from roll out the lady. red carpet <laughs> patricia had a question what about everybody else is shy you are shy everyone's singing your praises some, in the chat, I, my man. some of you all should be sending me a text right now text me and just say hey jerry hi <laughs> you got my number right you guys write it down yes yes i'll put it in the chat box thing because um I would love to get to know. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. I'm Kayla Vaughn, also known as the Medicare boss lady. All right, Medicare boss lady. <laughs> so that's part of my branding that I, I started um, last year. And um, I really appreciate what you shared today. It was that's very- called, That's called your moniker. My monitor? Moniker. Moniker, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I had also put in the chat, I also have difficulty in figuring out my secret sauce, but hearing you talk further, um, what attracts people to me, because I'm in the Medicare space, just like you're talking about, it's insurance, everybody has it, you know, um, it's my personality, it's my patience to work with people. I don't sell them. I educate them on what the choices are. Uh, a lot of people in my industry is just selling, selling, selling. I take people in as my friend um, and walk them through the process. So would that be my secret sauce? It can become your secret sauce. Okay. What you would want to do is take those elements. Th think of your secret sauce as your own special recipe. Like, I don't know if you like to cook, but let's assume you know how to cook, mm -hmm. right? And you got all these ingredients. So your secret sauce, you throw in those ingredients, which I kind of heard you just delineate with the personality and you do this and you do that, but it all has to end up as 
a three or a five or a seven step, whatever, system process method. And those ingredients are yours. Okay, because okay. remember what the client is paying for is what's the end result? People are paying for four things, one of four things from you. Let me throw this in for free. This is this answer your question. Number one, because of your secret sauce, can you solve a problem that I have? I've got a problem, my company, my team, my family, whatever. Can you make it go away? Number two, can you give me a better outcome? Can you take me from where I am to where I want to be? So what I want to know from you are what advantages do you offer over other alternatives? This is what I'm presently doing, thinking of doing, try doing, all that stuff. Number three, can you perform a miracle in my eyes? Now, this is the client that comes to you, especially around med uh, Medicare, that says, you know what? I'm in a real tough spot right now. Can you reverse this? This is a mess. Can you turn my midnight into day? Now, in my world, that's called miracle branding, and the extreme examples of, the, of that are brands that sell what's called the fantasy associated with miracles. Brands like, I'll show you how to lose 20 pounds in 20 days without going hu uh, hungry. Get rid of your belly fat in 10, 10 days. I can get rid of your mi migraine headache in five minutes. Guys, use the ab machine. You can have a six-pack in 30 days to stay on your couch, okay? That's the, that's the uh, fantasy of it. But the essence of it for you is can you reshape What's possible for someone where, whereby you're bringing forth a new possibility in their life that's no longer limited by their past. So you're, you're creating from the future, right? And then number four is, can you provide some kind of emotional payoff? If, some, if people work with you, can they get rid of and no longer experience whatever that negative emotion is? Frustration, overwhelmment, stress, and on and on and on, because there's a lot of negative emotions that people deal with, right? So if you think of those four, okay, in terms of, okay, should my brand revolve around getting rid of a problem they're associated with Medicare or giving them better outcomes versus other options they may be thinking of, performing some kind of miracle because of their situation financially or, or health-wise, I don't know, or number four, some kind of emotional payoff. They no longer have to feel frustrated and confused and overwhelmed by all of this. Or is it a combination thereof? And so when you, when you put all that together, it allows you to do what? Sell the sizzle and not the steak. Because people make buying decisions emotionally, not logically. And it's, in fact, some of you, if you want me to take a look at your, your words on your website, I'll look at them. Because one of the common problems I come across is that so many service-based entrepreneurs, the words on their in their communication are too logical. You're, do, you, you know, you're being too intellectual, too rational, too clinical, too professional, which shows up as being dry and boring. You've got to instead make, make heart connections and not hit connections. That's what moves the needle, right? Don't sell me a refrigerator, sell me fresher tasting food. Don't sell me a set of tires, sell me protection for my family. Don't sell me, you know, um, you know, and then, you know, um, the the drill that can make quarter inch holes. Sell me the pleasure of being able to make a quarter inch hole. What's your sizzle? <laughs> Come on now, it's, it's the bubbles, not the champagne. It's the whiff of the coffee, not the coffee. Are you all getting this? <laughs> <laughs> That's a kernel right there. Some of you, that could be a ding, 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 ding moment called, am I really making heart connections? So it's like selling the experience with yeah. them working with you. And describing it through your messaging yeah. in such a way where it's emotional based and not logic based mm -hmm. that connects and entices and engages people. All right, well, Mr. Foster, we're coming Once up. Again, this is a branding issue, not marketing. Right on. Don't, don't, marketing is not the holy grail. With the right branding, marketing ends up requiring what's called fewer impressions, which means you don't have to send out as many emails. You don't have to do as many social media postings. So $1 works like $5. You get a high return on your, on your marketing investment. So when, the, when it's anchored in the right brand, okay? Brand market sell. Sorry. Oh, boss, man. No, it's, um, we're coming up on the zero hour. So um, 
if you want one more time, just uh, let us know who you are and how to find you. And yes. uh, can, yeah, bring it on. So my cell, which is I'll put in the chat box again, is 310-382-6539. And send me a text, even if you just say hello uh, and want to connect with me. I love people. I would love nothing more than to hear from all of you and meet you and talk with you, okay? I don't do sales pitches. I, I just don't, okay? It's probably more of the reverse. You'd have to sell me on you. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. And so that's the first. And then the second thing is um, jerryfosterbranding.com forward slash captivate um, is my free training. Download that. And that, that comes with worksheets. And oh man, and do and then the, and then the main thing is do the brainstorming session with me. One hour with me. I could tell you, uh, I think I could speak for all of us that are on the call here that you've definitely inspired us and got the wheels turning about how we're going to be presenting our brands and developing our presentation. So I think you did a great job, my man. Um, yes. Thank you all for attending. And we look forward to seeing all of you at the uh, Network with the Nations, which will be the first Wednesday of every month, uh, 3 p.m. Central. And of course, the second, I'm sorry, the third Wednesday of every month, we have our sales mastery and fourth, like today, our speaker series. Thank you once again, Mr. Foster. It's been wonderful. And y'all have a great yeah. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jerry. Love you. Take care. Love you too. Bye-bye. Hope to hear Bye. from you. Bye. <laughs>